Here's a problem nobody has except Google. Uh, Linux is taking a minute to restart. You might say, why? My Linux box takes seconds to restart. So those guys have 16 and plus drives, NVMe, PCIe, uh, SSD drives uh, on their Linux boxes. And each drive, when Linux sends a signal to that drive to shut down and what, flush whatever it has in its cache, that takes around 4.5 to 5 seconds. I, I was surprised, just like it was like 5 seconds to shut out a drive. So it adds up when you have 16 plus drives, that just adds up to a minute, right? Because Linux is doing this synchronously. And uh, it's fascinating to me uh, reading these kind of articles uh, and how Google is trying to optimize the heck out of every single piece of the software stack. I, I'm just fascinated about this. How about we go into this article and discuss? All right, this comes from Foronix. Uh, guys, I really uh, encourage you to uh, subscribe to this uh, blog. I mean, I, I usually find it from Google News, and that's how I find my news, essentially. Uh, Foronix has been cranking great articles about Linux. And uh, frankly speaking, I, I'm not really expert in Linux, but I'm learning so much. So let's read a blurb about this and uh, discuss about uh, this synchronicity. In, in Linux. Uh, Google has a problem with Linux server. Reboots too slow due to too many NVMe drives. Hyperscale problems these days. Linux servers taking too long to reboot due to having too many NVMe drives. Thankfully, Google is working on an improvement to address this where some of their many driver server can take more than one minute for Linux to kernel to shut down so nobody cares right we're starting servers like if i'm if i'm restarting a server you know how often you restart actual server you keep them running for months and if you actually want to restart them yeah that'll take a minute or two but google cannot afford that right especially if you if you want to have availability and high availability all the time you want these machines to come back as fast as possible one minute can cost you a lot of money if you're Google. So Google Engineer are proposing an asynchronous shutdown interface for the Linux kernel. Currently, the Linux kernel shutdown API and the bus level are synchronous. What does that mean? I talked about uh, synchronous and asynchronous. I'm going to reference the video here, but which can cause problems like Google reports with having too many NVMe storage drives in a single server due to synchronous nature during the shutdown handling. Each NVMe can take about 4.5 seconds to shut down. So add that up and, and you're going to get it around a minute. Look at this. There's a, a actually a picture here with this list. I don't know if this is actually Google or is just the, the Foronix guys just brought, showed up a picture of 16 in VME. But guys, um, this this is really interesting. When I So this, this brings us back to just uh, nature of programming. You know, not... Uh, when, when you have synchronous APIs, and let's assume the Linux operating system is doing a loop. It's like, hey, I have 16 devices. Let's loop through each one of them and send the shutdown signal, right? Send the shutdown signal, and you have to wait for the, sing for the signal to come back, right? for the API to respond to you that, hey, okay, the shutdown has happened, right? And that takes five seconds. Then you only then you can move out of your loop and go to the next item effectively right that's how synchronous apis work right you you send and it's blocking you blocked you cannot move to the next uh, thing unless you actually wait for it so 4.5 second and then 4.5 second and then 4.5 second 5 second then a minute later you're just stuck so changing that to asynchronous will just loop, loop all of them send a signal to all of them concurrently almost concurrently not quite but at the same time send a signal to all of them you know i'm not i don't care about the result yet i need the result don't get me wrong but in parallel send all these requests just send, send and you loop and then you send all these requests you don't wait for everyone and you get a get back comes up sort of a call back whatever the implementation is right but then eventually once you have all of these jobs they, you're going to give back the events. But, but eventually, 
the the devices will shut down locally you know in parallel so the entire fleet of devices will shut down in around five se five five seconds or let's be generous maybe six or seven you know take take into consideration the actual time to loop and send the signal and get the callback logic and all that so yeah the whole thing just you can shave an entire minute obviously there's there must be a logic to handle that right at the api level you know uh, it's like to wait for all of these devices you know oh you cannot just send this and go to shut down you have to actually wait you still need to wait for all these devices to actually shut down you know but the wait here is now much quicker because now you sent these requests and then you're now waiting for all of them to reply to you you know you're not just sending one request and you're waiting and then sending and waiting and sending and waiting now you just sent everything and then you wait so yeah the fix looks simple enough i think it's safe uh i just don't know if theoretically speaking if you have like a uh, thousands of nvme drives or a, a lot of these drives in the one server uh i don't know if it will be uh still it will still have the same effect can you st send thousand concurrent uh, shutdown signals to in parallel almost to all those devices and just wait and then how how does this the linux manage that uh, i know there is all this uh, asynchronous io on linux and there is the new io ring thing that allows you to do that but uh, yeah I'm, I'm just not quite sure about that and it, uh, yeah, 16 devices is not really that bad it's just um, th that's that's where where you really need to you know can balance synchronous workload versus asynchronous you know yeah asynchronous is great you just send all these requests and i don't care i can do some other things but if you send too many requests too many then you really need to come back and manage those right these this request and then it depends only in the, in the asynchronous uh, program itself and linux might have a great one that doesn't have any side effects right but i, I can't imagine that sending like i don't know 10000 requests at the same time asynchronously it would be a good idea right uh, at the end of the day you need to mix synchronous which is you know the, the synchronous semantic is much simpler uh definitely memory efficient i would i would assume you know because it was this asynchronous you still need some sort of a structure to manage the out the, the result that come back to you but yeah i don't know anything about linux internal so i might be just speaking out of my ass here <laughs> but uh you know Guys, what do you think about this? Uh, I found this fascinating. I love this stuff. And uh, yeah, a lot of people ask ask me, how do you, uh, where do you get the news? I literally have Google News. And when you, when you, when you set up Google News, uh, basically, uh, whatever you're interested in, Google will show you more. And you can kind of feed the algorithm. And uh, Google News has been showing me great stuff. You know, I've been playing now Elden Ring, right? The, the game, the, the the half an hour I have a day after the baby, uh, and uh, Google News knows that I I play, right? Because I search in Google about certain guides, and if I'm stuck in certain area, uh, so uh, I I just uh, um, so Google News shows me about Elden Ring news as well. So uh, check it out if you're interested, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.